training and tracking your fitness in 2020 is way different than it was when I got that first HR monitor over 30 years ago. I'm reminded of the anecdote about there being more computing power in one iPhone than there was in the entirety of the US space program in the 60s. And every time I put on the Polar Vantage V, which is every day now, I'm reminded of how far technology has come in such a short time. If you've been running or riding as long as I have, then your first heart rate monitor was a Polar. That's an indisputable fact because they were ubiquitous. I don't even remember any other brands. Because of that, the name Polar, in my mind, has become synonymous with training data. And aside from a coach, the Vantage V is the single most comprehensive training aid I've ever used, full stop. But it does have a bit of an identity crisis going on. More on that later, though. If you're looking at picking up anything from the Vantage line, then I'm gonna assume that you're laser focused on numbers, data, and making the most of every minute of your training and recovery. And this will help you do that at an insanely granular level. And listen, going into the technical weeds isn't really my thing anymore. If you want a super deep dive, then there are other more exhaustive reviews out there. I'll link to one right now. I'm also a single sport athlete, so the focus for this review will be on how the Vantage V functions as a training aid for cycling and what it's like to live with it as an everyday timepiece and smartwatch. So as a cyclometer, my benchmark is the Wahoo Bolt, which is one of the most intuitive and easy to use computers on the market. It's simple, it's monochrome, and it just flat out works. And because it's all those things, it's spoiled me from a user experience standpoint. I wanna be able to pull something out of the box, download the app, throw out the instructions and rock and roll. And for being as complex and as robust as it is, I was able to do basically that with the Vantage. I think all I used the manual for was to figure out which button did what. My first order of business after that, of course, was connecting it to my Strava account because the Vantage tracks live segments. That was as easy as opening the app, tapping on general settings, and flipping the Strava switch. On the bike, I had solid accuracy with live segment activation, but there were a few local segments that would mysteriously drop from tracking for some reason, which I think was tied at the time to the changes Strava had made to their premium entitlements because it miraculously fixed itself once my subscription and firmware got updated. When you get done riding, uploading the ride to Strava is as easy as holding down the button at eight o'clock for a few seconds, then opening the Polar Flow app, then pressing it again to sync. When I compared that ride data to what my Wahoo had collected, Every metric was nearly identical, not nearly identical, it was identical, from speed to mileage to power to altitude. And as an added bonus, it only used about a quarter as much battery life to record the same ride. So this is definitely my go-to for extra long days in the saddle. Now earlier, I said that the Vantage is having a bit of an identity crisis, and I wanna get back to that. It kinda of reminds me of the Apple keynote when they launched the iPhone. You remember, it's an iPod, a phone, and an internet connector. Wait, internet communicator, connector, whatever. And it was pretty dang good at all three. I think the Vantage is trying to be a cyclometer, a coach, a timepiece, a smartwatch, a power meter, a heart rate monitor. And from the perspective of a competitive athlete, it's the mark. But as a smartwatch, it's super minimal. All you really get is notifications and activity tracking. And as a timepiece, it's kind of boring. I mean, it's a really comfortable digital watch. But if you're thinking it will replace your Apple Watch or your favorite G-Shock on either one of those fronts, then it probably won't. Now, Polar really knows their stuff, and this is an amazing piece of tech. But from a usability standpoint, here's five things I'd change. First, syncing takes a touch too long and you have to open the app to manually do it. That's just a few too many steps to get such a small file from one place to the other. It's tolerable, I just wish it were faster. Second, and this is my biggest nitpick, for the life of me, I couldn't make it stop accidentally counting laps on a bumpy gravel or mountain bike ride. Even with the button lock on and the vibrate feature disabled, it would still beep every time I had my wrist too close to the red button on a bump. The button lock helped, but it really needs to have a button shut off or maybe a soft button option that can be easily activated on the fly. Another change I'd make would be to have the capability to enable notifications during exercise. For some reason, it's shut off in the course software. There's also some noticeable touchscreen latency. I'd make it a bit more sensitive. And finally, the second strap band, this one right here, has a little snap in it. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's both awesome and terrible. It's awesome because it locks down the strap, but it can make removing the watch a little bit clunky. 
And while we're on the subject of the band, let's talk about five things I really love about the Vantage V. The first is the band. Oh my goodness, it's so comfy and it gives you near infinite adjustment. And that's nice because the second thing I love is the sleep tracking feature, which would be completely unusable if the band wasn't this velvety. The third thing that blew me away is the battery life. I could go about five days between charges and that typically included six to eight hours of total riding. And when I took it on a seven and a half hour ride, it used about 30% of its total battery life. You compare that to the Wahoo, the Wahoo used about 70% of its total battery life, maybe 75%. Number four on my list of favorite things about this watch is the built-in core, supportive, and cardio workouts. It's like having a personal trainer and Zen Master right on your wrist. And for a bike geek like me, it made it really easy to cross train in tolerable 20 to 40 minute sessions. And this may seem silly, but this was my first smartwatch. So the fifth thing I love is that it mirrors the notifications I've got set up on my phone, including apps like Slack and Ring. My Wahoo didn't support those kinds of notifications, and I also don't wear my Wahoo on my wrist, so it was nice to be able to keep up with those apps without having to carry my phone around the house all day. Oh, there's one more thing, so thing number six, or the bonus thing, and it's this. Since the Vantage is a full-blown cyclometer, I don't have to put anything on my handlebars, which makes for a super clean, minimal, almost analog-looking cockpit. It's probably been 20 years since I've ridden without a stem or a bar-mounted head unit, and it's refreshing to look down and see nothing but bike. If you wanna learn more or buy a Vantage for yourself, please check out the link in the description, and let me know in the comments when you got your first Polar. Okay, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.